At 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Well, it's not just the rain coming down in South Texas in the Hill Country. Temperatures are dropping, too. Adam Kasky is standing by for a look at our quickly changing conditions outside. Adam. Yeah, we have a cold front that's uh, been moving through town and it's really had an impact on temperatures and also it's affecting our shower activity and even severe thunderstorm potential, which is actually dropping basically with every passing minute and every passing hour. I, I don't foresee widespread severe thunderstorms. Well, let's take a look at the radar. We do have one severe thunderstorm that's down moving into Live Oak County right along I-37 southeast of San Antonio and behind it some other showers and storms developing as well. Carrizo Springs and especially just south of Carrizo Springs along 83 and near Three Rivers. That's where we have basically the leftovers of a severe thunderstorm still strong enough to be considered severe pushing to the east and crossing over I-37. This is good soaking rainfall. I mean, look at Lavaca County, Hallettsville to Gonzales, Nixon, Cuero. Good, good rain. Then you get closer to San Antonio and we're starting to see some good activity as well. All of this is basically moderate to even heavy in nature, moving gradually west to east. A little bit of lightning and thunder on the south side of town, Somerset, Von Army area, and along 1604 on the south side of Bear County. But overall, this is just good soaking rainfall. And since the front has already moved through, I really don't foresee uh, much of a potential for severe thunderstorms in town. Now this graphic is going to continue to update through this evening, but already today we've seen some good coverage of rain and even some nice pockets of one to two inches and in some cases even higher than two inches of rainfall. All right, let's talk temperatures with this cold front. 70 Floresville, 71 Divine, but then you head into the hill country, it's in the 50s. Even Bulverde at 58, Canyon Lake 57. At colder air is spilling southward. Get ready for another indoor day tomorrow. More rain to talk about and cool temperatures. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Adam. Workers bouncing between Bear County medical facilities could have exposed large numbers of people to COVID-19. Officials confirming today staff at a southeast side nursing home ravaged by the virus may have also been working at as many as seven other facilities. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg today amended the city's emergency order to prohibit nursing staff from working at more than one location. Our Dylan Collier reports now comes the task of determining whether the damage has already been done. The confirmation was a sobering reminder of a virus that knows no boundaries. Days after a COVID-19 outbreak at Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center that has already taken the life of one resident and infected well over 70 residents and staff members, city officials revealed that among the employees battling the virus, there was a floating practitioner who also worked at this Live Oak nursing facility. Both businesses are operated by the same company. In all, staff members at Southeast may have recently worked at as many as seven other nursing homes and hospitals in Bear and Wilson counties. When we discover that, we want to cut that loophole off immediately. Like Southeast, three of the other nursing facilities, the Rio at Mission Trails, Buena Vida Nursing and Rehab, and Advanced Rehab, all have Medicare.gov ratings of much below average. And it's likely that possible exposure extends beyond staff and residents at these nursing care facilities. On the list provided by the city today were two hospitals. Patients and staff at these locations are in the process of being contacted by the city. The important thing that we're going to do today is go triage those seven facilities, see who is symptomatic. If they're symptomatic, we're going to either treat them, but they're going to get swabbed. And any worker there that may be symptomatic, and we hope they've stayed home, we will swab them also. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, if there is a bright spot as another week of living in this new normal comes to an end, it is this. Paul Venema tells us that the initial pandemic panic that had shoppers standing in long grocery store lines has apparently abated. How are you doing today, sir? It looked like any other day at this Northside HEB. Trying to get some stuff for the day. <laughs> Raymond Gonzalez is following what they're asking of customers. So we remind customers, there's no need to come and panic shop. You can continue to shop as normal. There are a couple of things to keep in mind, however. To the extent that it's possible, only one person needs to come from a family to shop. Um, we think that's really important to help maintain those social distances within stores. Another thing to remember. We do use product limits. You'll see those throughout this pandemic, throughout the situation that we're facing. 
The store hours have been modified. They're open from 8 in the morning until 8 in the evening to give the staff time to restock the shelves. Customers say that's good news. When I came here two weeks ago, there was no eggs, there was nothing like that, but it seems like the shelves are a lot better stacked now, you know what I mean? All employees, whether stocking those shelves or working at the register, are getting an additional two bucks an hour through May 10th. They call it partner proud pay. We've been preparing for this um, since news first started coming out of China in January. We're very prepared for the long term. Paul Venemar, KSAT 12 News. I love all the stories we're seeing of people helping each other. Well, it's still happening. A partnership, actually, between the San Antonio Lighthouse for the Blind and a local leather goods manufacturer that had to furlough 80% of its employees because of a downturn in business. It's visually impaired workers already busy with military contracts producing uniforms, even chin straps for helmets. The Lighthouse for the Blind also wanted to produce face masks for the public. I had actually reached out to Lighthouse because I knew that they were well connected within the community and we wanted to be able to help. Durham's sister and ICU nurse helped design the mask that some of her employees will now produce with the potential of putting even more of them back to work once production ramps up. Well, there are lots of concerns about an unstable economy due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many people are looking to financial experts for advice on how to manage money. While analysts say everyone should find a financial plan tailored to their situation, there are opportunities for some to make worthwhile investments. Devin Clark with a few ideas. Right now, the economic situation is very volatile. Financial advisor and Torres Advisory Group CEO Rudy Torres says he's been in the industry for 30 years and has never seen such a drastic shift in the economy. Literally in four and a half weeks, our country has been turned upside down. Our businesses have been turned upside down. Torres says the pandemic has led to a change in the way people spend their money. People had been very confident about their portfolios with the money that they had. Hence then the spending was pretty high and the uh, economy was rolling on consumer spending. Right now, we can't do that. He and other experts agree a tailored budget is imperative to financial stability. Everybody's situation is different. Based on your budget, Torres says now could be a good time to invest. There's wonderful opportunities. You can take advantage of, of those through your 401k plan. And if you're dollar cost averaging, that's a, the best way to handle this uncertainty. If you don't have a savings account, Torres says it could be a good idea to set one up. If you have a brokerage account, an IRA account, I would recommend that you do that. Talk to your financial person. Certain accounts can be set up right from the comfort of your own home. Torres says when investing and saving, it's important to consider risk tolerance and goals and always consult a professional. For more information, just visit KSAT.com. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Time saver traffic right now. This is Loop 410. And uh, as we come off uh, 281 here, you can see usually this is backed up. Not a lot of traffic out there. It is wet. It is gray. It's a great time to just stay inside with family. Well, check this out. That is the San Antonio Symphony getting together for a rendition of, I'm not even going to attempt this, what is it, Elgar's Nim Nimrod from yep. Enigma Variations. Steve Patterson made the video and shared the story behind it, saying music director Sebastian Lang Lessing saw a video done by the Rotterdam Philharmonic and thought the symphony could do it too. With a little editing magic and the cooperation of the musicians who performed his or her part at home, here is the final result. You can see it online right now at ksat.com. Sounded amazing. It does, yeah. All right, live cam outside right now. The raindrops on the camera lens. Once again, telling the story out there. Are we in for more rain tonight, Adam Kasky? Yeah, it's mainly light in nature here where you're looking at the airport from 410, but we are looking at more rainfall later on tonight and especially into tomorrow. Now, this is good. It has some positive effects, of course. Aquifer already responding to yesterday's rain, up half a foot and still rising, especially as we continue to add more water to the aquifer. And here's a look at the pollen count. This is a big difference as well. Oak is now low at 80. I mean, we had counts of nearly 40,000 just a handful of days ago. 
Mold, however, rises with the rain, so that's up at 7,600. Mold's likely to be high the next several days with more rain chances. Get ready for another indoor day tomorrow. We'll talk about the rain and the cooler temperatures coming up in a few minutes. Complications when testing for COVID-19. One woman says she was turned away here at Freeman Coliseum after receiving a note from her hospital to get tested for the virus. Tonight, what the city's doing to make these tests more accessible to the community. The number of coronavirus cases in Kamau County continue to climb. Tonight, how the county is responding and working with local hospitals. We are standing by right now for uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Ron Nirenberg, and uh, County Judge Nelson Wolf's daily briefing. They get it at about 613 every night, updating us on the latest numbers in terms of confirmed cases, deaths, and so forth. A lot of concern about what is playing out at a local nursing home. Yesterday is when he detailed the fact that there were uh, more than 60 cases at one nursing home. Now we're finding out that a lot of those workers were working at several health care facilities. It'll be interesting to see what the mayor and the county judge have to say about that coming up just moments away. But again, we are waiting to hear from Mayor Ron Nuremberg as well as County Judge Nelson Wolf on the latest numbers. Uh, usually they're right at 613, so it kind of seems like maybe they're running a little bit later today. I don't know if that means there's some information that they're just getting in or exactly awesome. what is taking place at this point. But, you know, we have learned about the fact that the mayor has asked for more ventilators mm -hmm. for the city of San Antonio. He's concerned about what's happening uh, at that nursing center. And he says we're starting to get into the darkest days of this whole thing. Absolutely, and also we saw some of those images of them getting Freeman Coliseum ready. And so, um, yeah, lots lots that we're waiting on in terms of that information from the mayor. But right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, t check in with the weather. Hopefully they'll get to us here in a second and then we'll uh, bring that to you when we get it. Yeah, we'll Adam. go right there, Adam, as soon as we get the mayor. Yep, so we'll take a quick look at radar and jump into the forecast. Let's get right to it so we can get as much covered as we can before the mayor and uh, County Judge Nelson Wolf speak. So let's take a look at the radar screen and you'll see widespread areas of rain. Now, the actual coverage of rain is going to decrease a little bit as we go through the evening, but still some off and on showers. Then they'll pick up again tomorrow. We do have a new severe thunderstorm, and that's in Dimmick County, the closer to Katerina. That's far southwest of San Antonio, but we'll take a closer look at that storm. There you go, just south of Carrizo Springs, right along 83. That one really just blossomed. And it's south of Highway 90, south of I-10, where we still have the severe thunderstorm potential just over the next couple of hours as the cold front is marching southward. Once the cold front hits and your wind shifts northerly, your severe threat is gone, and we'll just have some good rain. And still looking at, well, actually the severe thunderstorm that was in Live Oak County really fell apart. This is otherwise just good rain. Quera, a little bit of lightning and thunder, but otherwise some good rain. Hallettsville and especially northern Lavaca County, I-10 corridor, Gonzales. This is good to see. I mean, let's we'll just take a closer look at some of this activity. Look at this good soaking rainfall. Good for the fields, good for the pastures. We like it. Good for the ranches out there. In the hill country, it's diminishing a little bit, but it's still nice, good rainfall. Then you get into San Antonio here, and not everybody around Bear County is actually getting the steady rain, but we do have a little bit of lightning and thunder here uh, near Elmendorf. Bronig Lake area, just southeast of town along 181. Uh, Calaveras Lake, seen a little bit of lightning and thunder and a heavy downpour. So this is the steady, just most recent picture of the radar. And you see, especially on the south side, 410, 1604, that's where we have more of the steady rain and a little bit of lightning and thunder. On the north side, yeah, some moderate rainfall. Now yesterday at the airport, we picked up just under half an inch of rain and it's nice to keep adding to that. Just to check, and to verify for you, current hail is really non-existent. This is our hail algorithm within the radar, and it's picking up some hail, of course, with that severe thunderstorm that's west of Catula, but that's it. And the severe weather threat continues to diminish with every hour. And here in San Antonio, I think our window has passed for the chance of severe weather. All right, so temperatures down into the 60s right now, even 58 in Holotus, but then you go to Divine and it's 70. At Kerrville's down to 51. Here's huge temperature difference. Look at this. You go from Fredericksburg at 47 to Laredo at 90. This is a real deal whopper of an April cold front that's pushing southward, and it's making its presence known, and you'll especially notice it throughout the day tomorrow. Tomorrow's a day where you may actually 
turn on your furnace, right? In April. Yeah, it's going to be cool. The winds have already shifted. There's that north wind and where you see the convergence. That's the cold front and right along that front. We have a little enhancement of the wind as well at times gusting in excess of 20 miles per hour. So as we go through the evening, more rainfall, but I don't think the coverage will be quite as widespread after 10 PM. Just some passing showers here and there damp and drizzly temperatures falling through the 50s and into the 40s by 10 p.m. 51 degrees by midnight will be 49. Then we get into tomorrow morning and we're 47 degrees and look at this. We only make it to 53 tomorrow afternoon. Might be that one last time to get the fireplace going before the heat of spring and summer really settles in off and on rain pretty much all day tomorrow. It's just going to be intermittent in nature. At times it'll be heavy north wind at 10 to 15, a raw rainy day. We get into Sunday still gray and damp, but not as much rain, just a little more sporadic in nature. It's 63, so temperatures are on the rise a little bit Sunday. Get into next week and temperatures are back in the 70s where they should be this time of year. And yes, we do have some daily rain and storm chances, but right now we're not expecting anything as widespread as what we're seeing into next week. But of course, we'll keep you updated on any changes that uh, come along. All right, thank you, Adam. We just want to let our viewers know we are still waiting on that city county briefing. We don't know if they're having some technical issues on their end or on our end, but we're going to work to, to sort that out and hopefully bring that to you soon. There are definitely some sort of technical mm -hmm. issues happening yeah. because this is the first time this hasn't happened right at 613. So let's move on to sports. A lot of us hanging out at home with our kids more, and that includes <laughs> some spurs. Larry. Yeah. Rudy Gay at home with his wife and his two boys who are four and five. And if they're normal four and five year old yeah. boys, you know they are running Rudy Gay around his house probably more than he runs around at Spurs practice. Coming up, Gay has a funny story about watching his two boys and Houston Texans offensive tackle Laramie Tunsil wants to be paid big time. Coming up. Tonight, the Spurs are scheduled to host the Golden State Warriors, the start of a three-game homestand in the Spurs' final nine games of the regular season. While stuck at home, several NBA players have gained a whole new respect for stay-at-home moms, teachers, etc. Spurs small forward Rudy Gay recently shared this funny story with ESPN. Quote, it's like every five minutes I'm trying to think of something for them to do, said Gay, who has two sons, Clinton five and four-year-old Dean. Gay got excited when they found a box turtle. They quickly named it Squirtle in the backyard on Wednesday, thinking it might hold their interest for hours. Quote, it was cool for three minutes, Gay said. Then they wanted something else. Sounds like little boys. Colgate junior guard Jordan Burns announced on Twitter he's entering his name in the 2020 NBA draft. The Marshall High School alum said dreams are as real as you make them. He will retain eligibility to return to Colgate for his senior season if he chooses. The NBA draft is scheduled for June 25th. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Houston Texans starting left tackle Laramie Tunsil wants to be the NFL's highest paid offensive lineman. He wants to average at least 19 to 20 million dollars per season, topping the Eagles Lane Johnson, who leads the pack, averaging 18 million per. Tunsil will likely get his wish because the Texans gave up a pair of first round picks and a second rounder for him, along with Kenny Stills last summer. Advantage Tunsil, who protects Deshaun Watson's blind side. As for Bill O'Brien trading away DeAndre Hopkins, here's what Tunsil had to say. That one hurts, but you know, it's a part of the business. I was in that same position not, a, not even a year ago. I was in that same position, so I, I, I know what's about. I know the feeling. And it's, just, it's all about business, and, and you know, we just got to keep moving and continue to, to win games and work to be the best. Tunsil is committing up to $250,000 towards COVID-19 relief to help his hometown in Lake City, Florida, and the Star of Hope Mission in Houston. In head coach Jeff Dow's first year at the helm, the UIW women's basketball team posted a program best finish and qualified for the first Southland Conference tournament, but the team didn't get to play due to the coronavirus pandemic and will now lose six of their top eight players. With all the restrictions on travel and face-to-face -face contact, how is Coach Dow recruiting for the future? Yeah, you're trying to hopefully convince some prospects, re recruits to potentially sign with you, but they have, in a lot of cases, they haven't physically been on your campus before. So, uh, got to get creative. A lot of, a lot of YouTube videos and virtual tours and that type of thing to try to, try to give them as most accurate of, of a picture of UIW as you can. 
Coach Dow said that most of his team has returned home and are adjusting to completing their academic workload remotely. With the AHL season suspended indefinitely, Rampage players don't know for sure when or if they will return to the Alamo City. The majority of the roster has already gone back to their hometowns to await official word. That includes team captain Jordan Nolan, who is currently in Ontario, and he says he doesn't have any answers for when the season will resume. We don't know a start date or if it if it will start, but um, you know I plan on doing a few things uh, within the next uh, probably week or so, go for a bike ride or whatever it is. But um, I got some weights at the house and a bike ride I can take outside, so I think that will be uh, keep me busy and help me uh, kind of not put on some pounds here. Nolan also said that they do have a group chat and have been staying in contact during the break. And former Smithson Valley quarterback Josh Atkins is coming back home. The New Mexico State graduate transfer accepted UTSA's offer. He has two years of eligibility remaining. That's got to be exciting for Josh and his family. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. Yep. Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. Time now for our coronavirus Q&A and joining us today is Adriana Cruz, who is the executive director of economic development and tourism with Governor Greg Abbott's office. First of all, Adriana, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I, I want to start by asking you a little bit. I know you're dealing mostly on a statewide level, but I want to start by asking you um, about San Antonio specifically. You know, San Antonio has a huge tourism and hospitality industry. What do you anticipate the impact to be in San Antonio specifically versus other areas of the state? Um, well, absolutely. Uh, tourism is extremely important to the state of Texas. It's one of our largest industry sectors, and, and of course, it's extremely important to the city of San Antonio. Uh, the data that we're seeing from the U.S. Travel Association and Tourism Economics, they're expecting about a third uh, uh, decline in uh, tourism spending uh, in 2020. 2019 was a banner year for the state of Texas, um, and so we're, we're going to see some declines um, given the current situation and, and the uh, a stay at home um, that we're seeing in so many communities and, and travel has basically ceased. Um, so it is going to be impactful uh, to all of our communities, large and small, particularly impactful to those for whom tourism uh, is one of their largest industry sectors. And so we do see that that is, is something that is going to have an impact. Yeah, you're describing San Antonio there when you say tourism is is huge because that's for sure. Now, it, obviously, you've also been uh, in communication with a lot of small businesses out there. Uh, in the break, we talked a little bit. And you told me that you've been doing a number of webinar, webinars with the Texas Workforce Commission. What are you telling? What's your main message to some of these business owners who are wondering if they're going to be able to make it to the next month and the next month and the next month? Uh, ab absolutely. Um, we have been partnering with the Texas Workforce Commission, with the Small Business Administration, and with local uh, small business development centers and uh, workforce solutions in different areas of the state. I think that one of the first ones that we did was actually with, um, we did one with the San Antonio Chamber, uh, actually a group of all of the San Antonio Chambers got together um, for small businesses in San Antonio. And then I just did one with the Workforce Solutions Alamo. And, you know, what we're hearing is uh, a lot of trying to understand um, unemployment insurance, uh, some of the changes in regulations. Governor Abbott uh, waived the 10-day requirement uh, to be able to file for unemployment. Um, also uh, waived was the um, re requirement that you be searching for a job. Um, so some of those uh, waivers have already taken place. Um, and then the Small Business Administration has rolled out some new programs, uh, one which actually took effect today, which is uh, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, or, or PPP. Um, and that's a, a loan up to $10 million so that small businesses can uh, make their paychecks, make their payroll. Uh, and these are forgivable loans if you keep your employees. Um, there's also uh, Governor Abbott issued, uh, uh, requested a disaster declaration uh, from the Small Business Administration so that our Texas businesses could qualify for the Economic Injury Disaster Recovery Loan Program. And another addition to that is if you are applying for an economic injury loan, you can request an advance 
of $10,000 on that loan. Um, and those advances are being made available within three days of the application. So just working together with our community partners and our state agency partners, we're trying to get that information out there uh, so that all of our small businesses can uh, make their applications and get the assistance that they need right now. Yeah, Absolutely. there is help out there. And, and you, you brought up a loan that, that, you know, I'm not a small business owner, but it grabbed my attention that if you keep, you can take out a loan to keep your employees paid and then it's forgiven if you do that at the end of the loan, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Um, and that is the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, there's information about all of these uh, loans and, and uh, forgivable loans how to apply, uh, of course, at the SBA website, sba.gov. Uh, but we also at the governor's office have created a uh, COVID-19 page for Texas businesses uh, that sort of compiles and aggregates all of the resources that we're seeing with other state agencies, the comptroller's office, Texas Workforce Commission. Uh, and that's at gov.texas.gov backslash business. Uh, there's also a, a a red button on there for coronavirus. You click on that and it takes you to directly to the coronavirus page. Uh, there's also an email uh, subscription that you can sign up for so that as we get new information, we are pushing that information out. This is a very fluid situation. Programs are becoming available uh, quickly. And so we're trying to just keep everyone as informed as possible on what the resources are that are available to them. Absolutely. You know, when this is all over, and hopefully it's over soon, I think that's a hope for everybody. Um, how do you think Texas is going to fare compared to other areas of the country? And can you speak to us about some of the planning going on behind the scenes um, to ensure that recovery? Sure. Well, you know, Texas uh, had the um, has probably still the strongest economy in the country, uh, the highest job creation rate in the country, uh, we have a diverse economy, and we have been uh, working hard to diversify our economy, um, not just the hospitality industry um, and oil and gas and energy sector, but technology and uh, life sciences and manufacturing. So uh, we have a diverse economy. Um, the thing that, you know, the things that make Texas a great place to live and to work and to do business have not changed. Um, those uh, things are going to continue to be here. Our, our productive workforce, our diverse workforce of 14 million. Um, and so, you know, working together, uh, we're working with our community partners uh, to make sure that we are ready uh, for the um, economic recovery and, and to come back and be continue to be the best state in the country to do business. Do you have any projections, uh, you know, if, if this, so if the stay-at-home orders are lifted, let's say in June, July, August, sometime this summer, how long before the economy rebounds? Have you have you narrowed it down that far yet? We haven't narrowed it down that far um, at this time. Um, you know, certain sectors, uh, and that that's the the great thing about a diverse economy is that uh, it's impacting some sectors um, more than others. Uh, while there are a lot of uh, people um, facing job loss right now, there's a lot of companies that are hiring at the same time. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, manufacturers that are continuing to manufacture, uh, that are actually retooling uh, to try to provide um, supplies um, as far as uh, medical needs that we have. And so, um, you know, it, it's really hard to say right now. Um, we're monitoring, of course, um, our, our economic factors and our uh, unemployment rate. Uh, we know that that's going to go up and there is going to be an impact, uh, but we're hoping that um, that's as, as minimal as possible. All right, Adriana Cruz, thank you so much with the Executive, or Executive Director of Economic Development and Tourism. Thank you again so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Appreciate thank your you, time. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we want to get to uh, some of the numbers that we have uh, that the mayor and the county judge released moments ago. Uh, there were some technical issues, so we could not carry that briefing, but these are the numbers. 342 confirmed cases. Uh, that is actually up. Uh, from uh, earlier numbers that we had. Um, and I think I've got those numbers here somewhere. There it is. 
Yeah, and I think as of yesterday, community yeah. spread cases were more than the travel-related cases. If you look at that graph there, um, they seem to be evened out as of today, 93. And the other thing that pops out at me is the nine deaths has stayed the same. That has yeah. not moved in three days. So that's 340, news 300, sorry, you see 342 cases up from 254 yesterday. That gives okay. you an idea of how yeah. far the numbers have gone up. Uh, 37 in ICU, 28 on ventilators. Uh, the mayor also talked about uh, what has happened inside that uh, nursing facility, the Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. 67 of the 84 residents have tested positive for wow. COVID-19. Uh, 11 tests were negative. Those residents are separated from the infected residents with separate staffs. There are 60 staff members at Southeast, and to date, eight of them have tested positive. They're in the process of testing all of this staff, as well as identifying other nursing facilities where these staff members have also worked, including other health care facilities. Uh, and he talked about the fact uh, that he is ordering all nursing staff, all nursing home staff, to only work at one place, not work at multiple places like some of these staff members yeah. did. Something we're going to continue to follow, by the way, if you obviously we missed the press conference due to some technical issues. We do have it on our website right now, KSAT.com, so you can check it out after this show. We'll be right back. News around Texas law enforcement in Dallas County hitting the streets to enforce an executive order requiring non-essential businesses to close. And they zeroed in on one Hobby Lobby. The deputies putting an end to the operations with managers getting a warning and interrupting shoppers who were still in the store. A store manager told to get on the intercom and get the customers out of that store immediately. Can we at least check out? Can I buy one thing? They're like, nope, can't buy anything. Just have to leave. The sudden closing coming just minutes after the county judge called Hobby Lobby out by name. Signs posted at the stores claim they are an essential business, saying they sell materials you can use to make your own masks as well as educational office and small business supplies. That did not fly with Dallas County officials. Well, the first temporary medical facility in Texas is being put together in Dallas at the K. Bailey Hutchison Convention Center to help handle the expected surge in patients infected with COVID-19. The National Guard is setting up space for 250 patients with room to expand if necessary. The Navy will provide doctors, nurses, and medics to staff the facility. In the past, the convention center has served as a shelter for the homeless on freezing cold nights and for thousands of evacuees escaping the effects of Hurricane Harvey. Looking outside with live cam. All right, Adam Kasky told us earlier that we can expect more rain. How about severe weather? I, you know, I really don't expect any severe weather here around San Antonio or in the hill country. Basically, the farther south you are of San Antonio, the more threat you have just for the next couple of hours. But as every hour goes by, our threat continues to diminish. Still some areas of rain around town. We'll take a closer look at the radar and of course, talk about our rain chances for the weekend. Get ready for another indoor day tomorrow and temperatures are dropping. All that coming up. Hi. All right, did you, let your, did you let your kids play out in the rain today? <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't. No, it's a little slippery. It is and a little so, slippery. Yeah, I'm afraid one of them there. is going to fall down, but uh, they wanted to, though. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I don't know how you kept them inside. Yeah. It's a good day to splash around in the puddles because not a whole lot of lightning out there. That's the nice thing about yeah. uh, days like today and tomorrow as well. So if your kids like to stomp in the puddles or even get into the mud, well, <laughs> tomorrow's going to be a good opportunity. But it's going to be much cooler, okay? So don't anticipate your typical spring rain as we get into Saturday. Right now you can see still a decent amount of showers out there. I like to see this on the radar screen. This is exactly what we needed and we keep getting it, especially farther east of San Antonio. But first we're going to head south of town. You, basically between Katarina and Catula, or really just southeast of Katarina, still a severe thunderstorm here. And this is pushing off to the east southeast. Decent amount of lightning with it, a little bit of hail as well, but the hail core not nearly as impressive as it was, say, 20, 30 minutes ago. There could be one inch diameter hail associated with that as it pushes eastward toward I 35, but likely passing south of Catula. So, those of you in Catula, you may get a little bit of rain from this, hear some thunder, 
but the hail core and the heaviest part of that storm will pass to your south. Elsewhere, west and southwest of town, just north of La Prior, some decent rain moving through Pearsall. We have some good rain in. Ooh, look at this. Coastal plain. Yes, jackpot right now. Almost every square inch of our eastern counties here along and south of I-10 getting in on that good rainfall. Even Wilson County, you see northern Wilson County, just north of Floresville, along 87 toward Nixon, Lavernia to Nixon. That's some good rainfall. South side of San Antonio, some good rain as well. This is nice soaking rain along 410 and 1604 on the south side of San Antonio. So, hey, looking good out there. The cold front has moved through and we're feeling its effects. Now, this is the latest drought monitor, which was just updated on Thursday. Clearly, we still need more rainfall for the majority of South Texas in our viewing area. Well, let's take a look at our radar on top of it. All right, let's go through the day today ever so slowly, and this is so nice to see these good showers falling on top of the drought stricken South Texas, and we're going to add to this as we get into tomorrow. Well, add to the rainfall, I should say, not the drought situation. We're going to basically put a big dent in the drought and uh, really, really cut it away in parts of South Texas here. So 70% rain chances tomorrow. It's going to be widespread. Then some scattered activity, 40% on Sunday. And then we get into next week and those rain chances fall off a little bit. So here's a look at our future cast. As we go through the evening, we'll still have some areas of rain, just not as persistent or as widespread. Some hit or miss showers overnight. First thing tomorrow morning, rain becomes fairly widespread and it's just going to be intermittent throughout the day. So one of those old fashioned rainy days where the rain is just off and on all day long and it's rather cool outside. I mean, this isn't your typical spring rain where you feel the mugginess and the warmth outside. Uh, it's going to feel like a fall rain tomorrow. All right, so let's talk temperatures. Right now we're 63 in San Antonio, but you get up into Junction in Fredericksburg in the 40s. Laredo still at 90. That's because they're on the warm side of the front. The rest of us, we're feeling the effects of that cold front. And look at this channel of cold air, this alleyway being funneled right down into South Texas. 42 Dallas, 36 right now in Oklahoma City. That's the cooler air that's spilling southward and oh, it's going to be affecting our Saturday big time. So let's talk about the day tomorrow. 47 in the morning, only 53 for an afternoon high temperature. On average, we'd be upper 70s right near 80. Uh -uh. Tomorrow, 53 degrees. So if you want to get that fireplace going for what's likely to be maybe the last time, uh, this this year, at least this season, I should say, before the heat comes in, tomorrow's the day. Rain only in the 50s. Sunday, well, we warm into the lower 60s, but we'll still see some more showers, just not as much as what we're expecting tomorrow. Now, as we go through the weekend, I wouldn't be surprised if we add another one to two inches of rainfall, locally higher amounts across a good part of our viewing area. So that's some promising news there. All right, Adam, I also want to tell you something else we learned from the news conference today. The mayor, as of midnight tonight, will be asking all of the golf courses and the driving ranges in town to close down. They had been left open uh, through this whole thing, but they will be closing down as of midnight. Yeah, tonight. that's an addendum to his current declaration. Also, in addition to that, all parks will close next weekend. That's Easter weekend. Big popular thing to do is yep. to camp out at the parks. Those will also close beginning Friday, April 10th through Monday at 5 a.m. So in the entire Easter weekend. Yep. I want to let you guys know about those. We'll be right back. Mayor Rod Nuremberg saying today, if anyone needed a wake up call about COVID-19 in San Antonio, this is it. Two days after city health officials confirmed a deadly outbreak at a Southeast side nursing facility, it comes word that employees there had also worked at medical buildings across the county. Well over 70 residents and staff members at Southeast have now tested positive for the virus. The city's emergency order has been updated to prohibit nursing care employees from working at more than one location. But seven facilities have already been linked to Southeast because of staff working 
at both places. Well, VIA is receiving $93.2 million in funding to help with public transportation amid the pandemic. The money, part of a $25 billion grant from the Department of Transportation. We reached out to VIA to see what they plan to do with the money, but we've not received a response yet. Meantime, the coronavirus is now crossing another dark milestone in the U.S. We have now hit a death toll of more than 6,000 people. Every state is saying the same thing. I need help. I need assistance. 1,200 households now have a pantry full of food following the San Antonio Food Bank's mega distribution site today at Brooks City Pace. It works like a drive through with vehicles pulling up, volunteers filling up the trunk with food. The food bank has even allowed more people to get food if their kids out of school or if you've lost your job or had your work hours cut and even for first responders. Needing help isn't a failure. Um, this is a crisis and people are struggling and we're here to help. Damp and cool this weekend, especially rainy on Saturday. Sunday, not as active in terms of the rainfall, but still low clouds and dampness. Into next week, we'll see a little bit of sunshine by Monday and back up to 77 at that point. Be good to see the sun mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Thanks so much for watching the news at 6. See you online at 9 and of course on the Night Beat at 10.